Hello everyone and welcome back to the Blood Red channel where I, Tom Greaves, am joined by Ben Boschak to take a look at the interna international matches that are currently taking place just to see how the Liverpool players have been representing their nations. Well, starting off then, Ben, um, Trent Alexander-Arnold has been the topic of conversation recently, to put it lightly. Um, what, have you made of, what have you made of what's been going on with the England camp? It is a strange one, I think, with Alexander Arnold. Like, he, I, I think he is one of England's best players, uh, but I, I'm not. into the sort of system that Gareth Southgate is trying to create. Um, if I was Southgate, I would build my team around. But obviously, I am not, and Southgate has other plans. So I, I think, unfortunately, it's just a difficult one for Trent. Yeah, it's... The competition right back is something that I just wanted to touch on because obviously they've got Kyle Walker, Reese James, and Kieran Trippier there, it, and, and there's a lot of emphasis put on Trent's defending. Whereas I personally don't really think that's the issue. I just think because it's so congested and he's got so many options, he must just struggle to think how he's going to work it on that side. Yeah, I, I don't think he's necessarily a bad defender. I think he's proven that at Liverpool, um, even when people were criticising him after the Ajax game, if you look at his defensive numbers, he won uh, almost 90% of his defensive duels in that game. So I don't think that's ever been the issue. I think at Liverpool, at times, he's certainly been exposed, which has left him vulnerable. But I, for me, I think it's just... He doesn't really suit the system that Southgate is trying to create. And that's the issue there. There's better suited players. It doesn't mean that Trent isn't good enough for England. It's just, I think, um, in the system that Southgate's trying to create, Trent is, is a kind of luxury player that you wouldn't necessarily use in that role. Yeah, and obviously... For Liverpool, he, he's got you know Mohamed Salah in front of him. Um, he's got the midfield that comes back and helps him out, and and, and the, Liverpool can kind of get themselves into that rhythm where they can cover for the players and get used to playing together and training together every week. Whereas it's not really the case with England; they only come together a couple of times a year, and they haven't really got that room to work on it and build him in the side. Um, I think the, the England players don't really give him much support coming back in, in terms of what. Jordan Henderson, for example, would offer him covering him in that position. Um, so playing him in the way Liverpool play him isn't really viable for England because Liverpool just tend to play him as... Liverpool kind of say to him, look, you're going to do your thing on the right-hand side, we've got you covered. Um, whereas England don't have the structure in place to be able to do that. Um, as a as an attacking fullback, he's the best, one of the best in the world. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I think... When people say that isn't the greatest defendant, I, I, I think to an extent there's a point there, but I don't particularly think it's as like present as everyone makes out. I think mm. it, it, it's easy. It's easy. It's like an easy point for opposition fans and journalists to jump on when it's not particularly going well for Liverpool, isn't it? Yeah, I mean that's how it seems like. I think when Liverpool are playing. Uh, especially recently, but I've re I wrote an article, I've wrote a few articles on this for Liverpool.com. I do feel like he's also suffering from the fact that Harvey Elliott has struggled defensively on his on in the right side in midfield role, and that has left Alexander Arnold very vulnerable. And, and I think Trent, to an extent, that he's not really necessarily helped by the fact that he has to take on not just one player, but sometimes two players at the same time. And I, I think that's kind of the concerning issue um, at Liverpool, which makes his defending look bad. But if you actually look at the underlying stats, defensively, this has been his best season so far. And, and I think he's definitely improving in that regard, even towards the end of last season. He's been pretty reliable defensively. And, and I, I think... Maybe in the past that might have been an issue, uh, but recently I don't think that's the case. And I think 
I, I, I think for from Liverpool's perspective, kind of Trent missing out on Southgate squad is not necessarily a bad thing. I think obviously in terms of fitness, he stays fit. But I think also in terms of motivation, I think um, Trent has kind of all, all, always pushed himself when he's had setbacks. And, and I think if he, even just this little setback, this minor one of, of missing out in the squad and not playing against Germany, that could spur him on if he's determined to make the World Cup squad. But if he doesn't make the World Cup squad as well, that, that could give him another extra sort of push to, to, to take him to even greater heights. And Liverpool will be the main beneficiaries of that, for sure. I think it's an interesting Elliot as well. I think in terms of him coming back and covering Trent in defence might have had. But I think also not just going back, I think possibly he, he may be a reason why Mohamed Salah isn't performing as well if he's starting forward trying to, you know, taking up that space that Salah wants to work in. And this isn't a criticism of Elliot by any stretch of the imagination. I think he's he's been great all season for Liverpool. He's mm-hmm. looked really bright, but I think Liverpool just kind of need to get used to the style of having him in the team more than anything. Not, it, And it's not, as I say, it's not a criticism because I honestly yeah. think he'll be a great player for us. He's only 19. Um, but it could be a problem. It could be one of the issues that Liverpool have been having this season. Um I just want to touch lastly on Trent then. Um, Southgate has played him in midfield in the past. Um, and he's and with him not being picked for the Germany squad at all to be experimented with any position, whether that was at right back or in midfield again, do you think that kind of means that that's him out now for the World Cup? Not necessarily. I mean, obviously, Southgate knows what, player Trent is he's watched him a lot of times uh I don't think that's the end of it uh his sort of world cup dream but um it is it is a strange strange timing to, to leave him out before the last world cup game and and I think it it certainly feels like unless there is an injury at right back Trent might not be in the squad, might not be in the 23. And even if he does get in, I think it's very unlikely that he will feature in, in the games that matter for England anyway. Yeah. Well, moving on then. Uh, Van Dijk found himself on the score sheet again with a header from a corner, which is something that we're actually quite used to seeing. Um, he's quite got quite a knack of finding himself in those positions, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he's unstoppable. I think from headers when the cross is put in right, I think there's no one beating him. Uh, he's just got that those power headers that just burst the net sometimes, and I think that he's probably one of the best in the business when it comes to that. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see him back on the score sheet again. Um, I I don't know whether he has got one for Liverpool this year, but he, he usually pops up with quite a few, doesn't he? Um, yeah. And I think just if he can get if he can get in a bit of scoring form, I know we put in quite a few corners against uh, Newcastle in that Newcastle game, um, yeah. and we were looking really dangerous from them. Um, and and you know with uh, Joel Matip getting a header as, as well in recent weeks, it, it seems to be something that Liverpool have actually been working on, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean he grabbed a header I think against Bournemouth. Uh, Did he? You know, in, in that game, so many people scored. You kind of just forget yeah, you just lose like, track of it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I think it's always Liverpool have always been a threat from corners uh, since Van Dijk has arrived. I think his first goal and his debut was from a corner or from a set piece anyway against Everton. Yeah, um, uh, I think obviously when you have the likes of Timikas as well and Trent Alexander Arnold and Andy Robertson who can put in some pretty mean crosses from corners, yeah. it, that helps as well. And I think. Um, Liverpool, I think, in the league in general, are the best um, when it comes to set pieces. So, they did beat um, Holland, I'm talking about Holland, did beat Belgium Mm -hmm. the other night um, with that Van Dijk goal. And in their group is Sadio Mane's Senegal in the World Cup. Um, Do you think Virgil will be right up for that one? They also have Ecuador and Qatar, so I do think that he'll have a pretty good chance of qualifying. Yeah. Um, but I think he'll be bang up for that against Manadio. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I watched him against Poland in the first game in the Nations League during this international uh, break just because I was interested. You know, he's kind of struggled a little bit uh, in in terms of form yeah. for Liverpool at times. Uh, obviously, he's given away a couple of penalties and, yeah, he's, he's had a, a bit of a rough time, I think. And uh, it was very surprising to see him. Well, sh- I shouldn't say surprised, but given his form, it was... It refreshing to see him in a different light coming up against probably the best striker in the world in Robert Lewandowski and uh, I wrote an article for Liverpool.com about his performance on that night it was uh, pretty peak Van Dijk I should say in, in terms of the way he eliminated Lewandowski from the game completely uh, Lewandowski didn't even have a shot uh, for the entire uh, 90 minutes that he featured and, and, and he couldn't really get a sniff at goal and uh, that wasn't just because Holland are better than Poland, because Poland have had, had a few chances, but um, a sort of Van Dijk sort of just marked Lewandowski out of the game, and, and that was really good to see. He still got it, Van Dijk. And, and then the goal against Belgium, I think he's going to be coming back to Liverpool, you know, full of confidence. He, the, his side have won the, their group in the Nations League. He, he was the captain. He, he's achieved something uh, with them now, and uh, I think uh, that's going to be very important for Liverpool to 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 see him in that kind of form again, in the red shirt as well, not just the orange one. Yeah, get just getting him back up into that type of form. You know, I'm talking 17, 18 form on the way to Kiev. You know, the next year in Madrid, and I think since his injury, he he's been he's been Van Dijk, but mm. he's just kind of looked. Like a Van Dyke light, um, particularly last season at times. Um, mm. But, you know, we've still been competing, we've still been performing. And I think, you know, Ibrahim, Ibrahim Akanata, he's got a lot to, um, got a lot to be like, he's got a lot of the credit for that, really, because um, he, he's been fantastic ever since he's stepped up. And he can't seem, Ibrahim Akanata can't seem to break into that France squad. Um, you know, they've got up Meccano, um Saliba, the Arsenal guy. Um, and he, there's a lot of competition for the French fullback spots. Jules Koundé, um, that he was just linked to Chelsea, just gone to Barcelona as well. Um, but just going back to Van Dijk, um, it would be great to see him get into that kind of form again. Um, and I really think he'll fancy his chances to pick up some silverware for Liverpool this year. And have a great shot at it in the World Cup as well. Um, just moving on then, finally, I um, want to talk about Diogo Jota. He got himself on the score sheet, I believe, for Portugal in a 4-0 win against the Czech Republic a couple of nights ago. Um, and he is playing again tonight. Just how important is it that he can start getting himself into form as well, especially after you know the injury and the start of the season he's had so he can kick on and do well for Liverpool? I think it's huge. I think, you know, he... he... Kind of, towards the end of last season, he had a, a bit of a bad patch when he wasn't scoring, and I think that goal that he scored to Portugal was his first in in a competitive game at least in in over 150 days. So uh, that goes to show how long it's been for him to score. And I think the first one when you go through a, a, a sort of uh, form like that, the first one is always the most difficult to, to get and I think that that was really important for him to score. Yeah, he only played I think around 20 minutes or half an hour for Portugal when he came on and uh, it was nice to see that he, he did manage to get on the score sheet and uh, yeah I think in terms of Liverpool's if you look at um, the attack I think we have kind of missed a poacher like Shotter uh, Nunes is, is a different type of player. Firmino as well. He, Firmino tends to drop back. He's more creative. Nunes likes to get in the physical battles and, and, and he's more of a threat aerially, whereas I think Jota is just a, a huge threat in, in, in and around that penalty area where, where he gets most of his goals. And I think um, in terms of the Liverpool have created high volume of chances and they've been half chances and mo- on the mostly and 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 Jota is Liverpool's best finisher so if Liverpool 
can get Jota in, in, into the form of that he was when he first arrived at the club, then that would be a, a major benefit to everyone around the club. Yeah, just as you mentioned it, then I was just thinking that Liverpool have actually quite a vast array of different kinds of forwards, don't they? Um, you've got Luis Diaz, who's tricky as a box of frogs running at you. Um, Darwin Nunes, who, who's like a bit of a striker, number nine type figure. Um, Jota, who's a poacher, as you say, and then Bobby, who's like a false nine dropping back. So, you know, if, if everyone's fit this season, um, we, we just need to make sure we can keep on, on top of these injuries, keep, keep everyone flowing. Get out, we, Darwin Nunes needs to get a few games under his belt as well, and then we'll see where we are in a couple of months. But um, I think we'll leave it there anyway. Uh, on the injury note, Diogo Jota is playing Spain tonight, so let's hope that he doesn't pick up anything and uh, he'll be raring to go against Brighton at the weekend. Um, nice one for everyone for watching. Um, I'm Tom Greaves and I've been joined by Liverpool.com's Ben Boxack. Make sure to check out all the content going up out across our site and podcasts going out over the next couple of days. And thanks for watching.